Thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, our learning walk today is gonna to be visiting third and fourth grade classrooms, both the dual language and the monolingual classrooms. After winter break, we have had one learning walk every single week. Today, the seven and eight grade teachers, they have their preparation period the first hour from eight to nine. So those are the teachers that were invited to visit classrooms, along with the special ed teacher. This is a great opportunity to talk about students and their learning, but also adults and our learning. This is the second time that I've participated in a learning walk, and I think that my perception has evolved. I feel that it's very helpful. It gives us the opportunity to really see other classrooms that we normally would not get a chance to see. Even though you're not actually talking with the teacher, it gives you just a snapshot of how they conduct their lessons. It's really getting a reading of what the class feels like and looks like. By watching these teachers, I kind of see a reflection of myself. And when I see that reflection, I go back to my room and I make adjustments. If you ask a student, I think it's really great to see their teachers in other spaces. So there's definitely times where they see their math teacher in their PE room, or there's a dance teacher that comes into their first grade reading class. And so there's definitely that sense that we're a community, that we're all on the same page. I think that that's really good for students. What you'll be receiving here is your template for our walk. This has been modified with teacher input over time, so it's definitely uh, more user-friendly. You should note a couple things. The four conditions of the motivational framework are at the top. Each team is only going to be looking for two conditions at a time. The motivational framework is a framework for look-fors. So it's comprehensive in its scope, but it provides enough definition that when people go into classrooms, they're not looking for the sun and the moon and the stars. They're looking for the kinds of things that you could really see in a brief period of time that would be motivationally and instructionally significant. Here, this whole concept with actually looking at inclusion and attitude and competence and meaning is very new to me. It's another lens that I was not aware of that I feel like is missing in a lot of schools. We'll be spending about three to four minutes in every classroom and then we're gonna debrief right outside so we get a chance to share our thoughts. And then we'll all come back together and sit down and debrief the process itself. So what's Papa trying to do when he's telling her no? Trying to tell her to get in. Why? Because he wants to... Um, keep them safe. Keep her safe, right? He's protecting her. When I walked in each classroom, I was really focused on the inclusion part and the attitude. Looking at the boards, is it a representation of great work in the classroom? And not only teacher-driven work, but the kids work in there. Is it a representation of different cultures? Because it's a multicultural school. Is it a different representation of the language there? Was it more student-driven or very heavy teacher-driven? Mine was attitude. If you stop by a group of students, were they able to tell you what they were doing and why they were doing it? Two, did it look like they had options, choices? Finally, was the opportunity present for extra help? So we were looking to see if we can identify those items within a few minutes. Evidence of responsible group work. We saw only groups today, so mm -hmm. what did you see in the various groups? The activity was they had to read the chapters and then they have to de debate and agree on the chapter name. So like they had the to title, create their title, own title, title name for the chapter, which I thought was great. Score? Hi. 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 Okay. Necesito ver muchos detalles. No solamente yo me sentí avergonzada cuando me caí. Eso no es nada, ¿verdad? Más detalles, ¿verdad? I was looking for meaning, like the thinking process. And it wasn't just for students, it's also for the teacher. How does she engage them? And where are the routines that establish that? Challenge and engagement in students is high, medium? I, I would say, say high. high. I, I would say, say high. high. I saw the high. Yes, yeah. you agree? Yes. Yeah. OK. Yeah, there was really challenging text yeah. and right. they were truly supporting each other. Yes, yes. that's great. Right. Mm -hmm. They didn't all have the same text. I'm going to go ahead and take some notes. I know we shared the same classrooms, but we didn't share the same conditions of the motivational framework. So I'm interested to hear a little bit more about meaning and likewise I hope you're interested to hear a little bit more about um, inclusion and attitude. After we visited the four classrooms, our number one goal is to have the teachers have a voice and start that conversation of what did they see in a form of wows and wonders. 
So with WOWS, we really want to know, what did you notice in that three, four minute setting that really grabbed your attention? Students questioning, like, what do you think? Mm -hmm. That's something we do in the upper cycles, and sometimes I have difficulty having students even uh, a probe that way. Mm -hmm. So that was a true WOW for me. Mm -hmm. I notice a big difference between a strong community feeling in the classrooms versus a classroom that does not have a very strong mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah. And it makes me reflect. I said, okay, am I providing this strong community in my classroom mm -hmm. too? After the wows are presented, we go into the forms of wonders. What are some questions that you have? What did you walk away thinking like, I wonder if, or how did the teacher do this? Or when we walk away, what's happening next? I wasn't seeing a lot of student work, but it might have been where I was looking and I'm wondering if that's because there are so many anger charts. Exactly. You know? That was a common conversation with our group, student work. We saw a lot of teacher-made charts and um, sometimes it's a little overstimulating, sometimes understimulating. You just go by numbers. We were able to impact around 15 people in an experience that took one hour. It's already like a 40 people that somehow have participated already in the process. So that's my vision, that we just continue doing this. My theory is that if we are consistent enough and people feel more comfortable and they become more expert in the use of this routine or their role in this routine, they're going to, we, all of us, it's not only the teachers, but all of us, we are going to be able to have those meaningful conversations about teaching and learning.